Hello, and welcome to another episode of Adventures with Time. And hello from Russia, specifically Chistopol in Tartasan, Russia. I'm standing here in front of the factory that I believe built my new Vostok watch. But the story's a bit foggy. Hey, watch where you're driving. I'll join this story during World War II, when on October 15, 1941, during the Battle of Moscow, the first Moscow watch factory had to evacuate, and they came here to Chistopol. After the war, they continued making watches here under several brand names, but it was in 1962 that they settled on the brand name Vostok, after Yuri Gagarin's spaceship, the Vostok One. During the 1990s, a Lithuanian company started to acquire the assets of this factory, and soon they owned everything. And they formed the Vostok Europe Watch Company. And although Vostok remained a separate brand, it is not clear which watch brands are actually made in this factory today. Let's go home and discuss why I bought a Vostok watch and have a review of the actual watch I bought. Scotty, beam me home. Well, I hope you enjoyed our virtual trip to Chistopol. Now, I bought this watch online at Miranon.com, a retail store for Vostok watches and other brands located just down the street from the factory we just visited. On their site, you'll find hundreds of watches from not only Vostok, but other brands, many styles and designs to choose from. After looking at the many watches on the site, I decided I wanted an automatic with a date complication. And I wanted a fairly plain dial. I didn't want one with a tank or a submarine or some other military symbol. To me, these seem a bit tacky. Not that, you know, there's anything wrong with that. If that's what you like, that's fine. But I wanted something plain. So I chose the Komodonsky model and mine just has a plain red communist star on it. My watch was $78. Now you can find watches down in the 40s or even over $100, but I think with an automatic movement, that's what they range in in Vostok watches. I also chose a watch that had a stainless steel brush finish. They have watches that are polished. They seem to be chrome plated. I couldn't really tell for sure. But I didn't like those, they look a bit cheap. From what I can tell, people either love or hate Vostok watches. Some think they provide a good value for the money. Some think they're just pure junk. Others like to use them for modding watches, that is changing the crystal, changing the dial, doing all the other sorts of modifications to it. And with a watch that's under $100, that makes sense to me but I just wanted a watch that was manufactured in Russia. I don't have much expectation. After all, what are you gonna get for $78? But let's take a closer look at this Vostok Komodonsky. The watch came in this basic plastic box with the Vostok logo on it. And inside, other than the watch, were a couple of pamphlets in Russian. I assume this one is Places you can either buy or get service on the watch. And this one is, I assume, the instruction manual to the watch. Again, in Russian, but it's a fairly simple watch, so it doesn't take a lot to figure out how to use it. So here's my Kamadansky watch. Fairly plain, as I told you. Uh, there's the communist red star and the Vostok logo that says Komodonsky, which means commander, 31 jewels, and down there in small type says made in Russia, all against this black dial. There is 
a little loom on those hour indicators. It's got a bi-directional bezel, which is smooth, no click stops. Although I wouldn't even wear this in the water, I would not use the bezel for timing a dive because it's very easy to have it move accidentally. The case is stainless steel brushed, no polish on the case itself. The case back has again some design on it. I don't know if it's supposed to signify anything. Uh, and then it says 200 meters for which the watch is rated and Based on what I can tell, that translation of that long word down there means rated four. Basic screw down back. And it's got a screw down crown. There is no hacking on this watch, but if you pull it out to the time setting position and give a little back pressure, as you see here, you can stop the second hand. I really don't know if that's doing any damage to the watch, but I've done that when I had to set the exact time. Once you do that, though, I find it hard to get back into the winding position. You almost have to screw it back in and then pop it out again to get it to wind, and there it's winding. I can feel some pressure. The other thing that people talk about on this watch is this very loose crown stem. It wobbles a lot. Some people thought that that was an issue with the watch. They got a broken watch. I've read elsewhere that it's actually a stem on a universal joint so that any pressure you apply to the stem while it's out will not break the stem. I guess I tend to believe that given that all of their watches seem to have that feature on it. As you know, I like to buy my watches on bracelets from the manufacturer. You can always put it on a strap later. So this bracelet, again, is not much to speak about. It's three-part links, uh, the center part being polished, the outside pieces of the link being brushed, and it's all made not from solid links, but from bent pieces of metal. And the clasp itself is stamped. To take out any links, it looks like a push pin type of mechanism. So that's the watch, but again, I think it's worth the $78. And for me, the real attraction to the watch is what it says below there, which is made in Russia. This is my Russian watch. Let me make one more point about this watch. In my last episode, I talked about beater watches. And some might think that for $78, this might make a good beater. I don't think so. But I'm not sure it would really hold up very well, especially that bracelet. As you can see, I've already put some minor scratches in the crystal. I'll try to buff those out later, but this could be a common occurrence with this watch. And I'm not even sure I would trust it underwater. But we'll see how well it holds up for me over time. So that's my Vostok Komodonsky. All in all, I'm very pleased about my purchase. Although there's nothing really special about it, it is a watch from Russia. And that's pretty cool. Thanks for watching. And please provide feedback in the comments below. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up button so I know I'm producing something that you like. And subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the episodes. Thank you.